Today we're going to be talking about permuta permutations and combinations and the fundamental counting principle. So this first example I always like to use to set up what we're talking about. So Rocco's offers two types of crust, three choices of sauce, and 39 toppings. And okay, so see, we had, we want to order a pizza with one type of crust, one type of sauce, and one topping. So we have crust A and we have crust B. Okay, and now there's three types of sauce. So there's coming from, we have sauce type one, sauce type two, sauce type three, and same thing with B. Now, for the 39 toppings, I can only pick one topping, but with crust A, sauce one, I have now have 39 different types of possibilities of toppings. That's a lot of math for me to do. Okay, there's a shorter way though. It's our fundamental counting principle. If there are n items, an m sub one ways to choose the first item, and n sub, n sub two ways to choose the second item, the first item can be chosen and so on, such that m1 times m2 times all the way through mn. What that really means, okay? If you have two types of crust, three choices of sauce and 39 toppings, for our crust, we have two possibilities. We multiply that times the possibilities for our sauce, which was three types of sauce, times by our number of toppings, which was 39. So we have two times three times 39, and that is a possibility at Bracco's Pizza, just with this scenario of 234 types of pizza. Okay. To make a yogurt parfait, you choose one flavor of yogurt, one fruit topping, and one nut topping. How many choices are there? So for your flavor, you have two flavors to choose from. For your fruit, we have one, two, three, four, five flavors of fruit, and nuts, there's three flavors. So multiplying all those together, we have 30 types of yogurt parfait that we could come up with. Okay, so it's just a manner of multiplying. Now this is a good example, especially in our big technology age where we have lots of passwords that we now need to memorize and try, people trying to steal our passwords all the time. So a password for a site consists of four digits followed by two letters. The letters A and Z are not used, that's going to be key, and each digit or letter may be used more than once. So I can repeat, how many unique passwords are possible? So we have four digits, one, two, three, four, and then we have two letters. So think about it, how many digits are there? Remember, zero is a digit, so there is 10 digits. Since I can repeat, we have the digits 10 to the fourth times, now the letters A and Z are not to be used. There's 26 letters, so take away two, that's gonna be 24 times 24. So multiplying all that together, this is what we get. Okay, so that's how many different type of unique passwords that can be used. A factorial, this is a new way, a new operation that we have. So n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way until you get to 1. So that means that 7 factorial is equal to 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? Okay, so let's look at this. 2 factorial over 6 factorial. So 2 factorial is 2 times 1. 6 is 6 
times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Since we're multiplying, those can cancel and we're left with a 1 on top. We're left with 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 on the bottom, which is 360. Now number 2, 7 factorial <clears throat> over times 3 factorial over 4 factorial. So this is equal to 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial, and I'll show you guys why I did that in a minute, times by 3 factorial. Okay, so this was just this 7 factorial, and then the 3 factorial is just that, and that is all over... 4 factorial. Now remember, you're multiplying. So when I'm multiplying, I can cancel those 4 factorials out. So that makes your life a little bit easier. So you have 7 times 6 times 5 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we have 7 times 6 times 5 times 3 times 2 times 1. And that is 12 60. Permutations. So permutations, and this is important for you guys to realize. This gets into a lot of statistics if you're choosing to take statistics next year. And also, I think it shows up on the SATs. So consider the possible arrangements of letters A, B, and C. The list of outcomes in the sample space, the order is important, meaning that A, B, and C, A, C and B are all different. Now with B first, A or B, then A, then C, B, C, and A, and then with C first, so I would have six different permutations. Now the permutation formula is used when the items are different. Okay, so and the order matters. Okay, so n is the number of available items and r is the number of items selected. Remember, permutations takes order into account. Okay, so the order matters. Meaning a red, blue, and green is that the same thing as a green, blue, and red? Like, say, if you were spinning um, a spinner and it had those three different types of colors on the spinner. Okay. So, finding permutations. How many ways can a student government select a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer from a group of six people? So there's six people and we're taking a permutation of four of them. Okay. The reason I write it like this is in your calculator, this is the actual notation that you're gonna use. And I'll show you guys how to do this in your calculator, but it's six and then N, P, R, four. There's six things that I'm picking from and there's four spots open for them and that works out to be 360. And then now I'll show you how to do that on your calculator. So the first example we did, we needed to do six permutation four. So what we did there, how you get to the permutation menus. First, Remember, you needed to do, you need to write out the six, because that's the first number that you wrote in. Go to math. We're going to be doing probability. So arrow over the left to probability. That's how number two is our permutation. Notice how number three is going to be combination, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And then number four is our factorial button. So we want to do a permutation of four. 
So 6 NPR4. That's why I write it in that notation. Press Enter. And we get 360. So on our calculator, we got the same thing, 360, that we got when I wrote it out here. And going back to this previous slide, I have the formula here for permutations. I didn't even talk about it um, because I don't want you guys, you don't have to know that formula. Honestly, I don't even remember that formula. All you need to remember is how to do it in your calculator. So our next example. How many ways could a stylus arrange five of eight vases from left to right in a store display? So we have eight vases and we're permutating them in five spots because each of the vases is unique and order matters when I put these vases in. So that ends up being... six thousand seven hundred and twenty now you can also use the fundamental counting principle for this uh, there's five spots one two three four five what you could also do is you could think about it like this for your first spot there's eight vases possible for the next spot there's one less because they've used up one here so there's only seven vases possible for the next spot and then six five, and four. So when you do that, you should get the same answer. And we do. Okay? Now combinations, similar to permutations, but order doesn't matter. So I'm just, I think of this as I'm choosing things. Like if I was just, if I had those eight vases and I was choosing five vases, okay, not ordering them, lining them up, okay? So, and this is the formula for combinations, and it's in your calculator, very similar to where permutations were. Okay, there is 12 different colored cubes in a bag. How many ways can Randall draw a set of four cubes? So he's going in and he's picking out, he's choosing, that's why I think of choosing, he's drawing, choosing four cubes. So it's 12 NCR4. And again, you don't need to memorize that formula, you just need to plug it in your calculator. And doing that, we get 495. And then I'll show you now how to do this in your calculator. Now the next example, we wanted to do 12C4. 12 combinations, so you go over to math, probability combinations number 3, 4, press enter, and we get 495. And notice now that in your calculator, we got the same thing that we got here. Okay, swim team has eight swimmers. Two swimmers can be selected to swim in the first heat. So it doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter in this case. How many swimmers can be selected? So we have eight swimmers, and we're choosing two of them. And so that ends up being 28. There's 28 different ways that I, from the eight people that I have, that I could choose two to swim in our first heat. Okay, there are your three lesson questions, and please make sure those are submitted on time.